people have been talking about data in the upfronts and new fronts for uh, quite a long period of time now at this stage. And I would say that um, one of the, it's not a, a comment that I can quote just for myself, but data by itself is dumb. Uh, data is only smart when you have the right technology and talent to help make sense of it. And in fact, you have some marketers who have spent you know, many years being quite expert uh, deployers of data in channels other than digital, um, who are now trying to find out different ways of making sure that they are stitching all that data together in a way that's meaningful across all channels. Uh, I would say that with regard to the new front, um, one of the things that has come up historically has sort of been a almost a abstract discussion of data. And I think what needs to come into play is how are publishers themselves using um, those types of information that they own specifically to help drive um, their own business forward? What are the ways that they could potentially partner with uh, agencies and clients in a way to drive um, more meaningful business together holistically? And I think the challenges today that are even more sort of paramount are with uh, GDPR, in effect, um, who owns that data and who's responsible for the integrity of that data and how long you hold it on for uh, has uh, even more sort of uh, risk and complication associated with it. So there, there's a new sort of sense, I think, of um, focus and I think um, clarity that maybe publishers need to sort of shape as they start to talk about marketers about this, this area. Um, I think the potential is still there, but it is one that is, uh, um, I'd say, uh, slightly unfocused in a place that uh, maybe it needs to have a bit more focus uh, as we shape solutions moving forward. There continues to be a, a flight to uh, quality, uh, and I think you've, you've already seen that in, if you think about some of the larger players who have had some brand issues recently, they've taken very uh, consistent, very public steps to try to um, show improvement. Um, and I think that uh, despite that, there is still a lot of uncertainty and, and concern amongst, I think, the marketing community. Uh, and I think that they are um, at times more comfortable in places where some of the, um, you know, I'd say automated uh, you know, sort of reliance systems are, are not the only check that you have in terms of ensuring that the context that your brand is running in is going to be brand safe. I'd even add that on top of that, I think that the value of some premium content um, uh, uh, producers is that it's not only a brand safe environment, it's one that should be brand accretive as well. So the context of what is being, uh, the story that's being told, the opportunity to connect more deeply with that content in a way as a marketer that could have uh, much more, more, more value in that front. I would say that, um, you know, what you're seeing today is uh, um, a culmination of a giant shift into digital over many years that um, if you think about brand safety itself, the ad verification partners that we work with today that everyone works with, whether you're a publisher or a client or an agency, in 2014, they were not widely used. Today, I'd say uh, every one of our clients uh, certainly uses them, and I imagine almost every agency that goes to market uses some sort of ad verification partner. And publishers have, I think, come a long way in terms of cleaning up their aspect of the supply chain, but um, in areas such as open exchange programmatic, it still, uh, it still can be a bit of the Wild West. So how do you, um, when you're partnering together uh, at times like this during this year, you know, if you asked, if you're asked by a marketer, how can I be 100% certain that my ad is not going to run in a context that could potentially damage their brand? If you're talking about an auction-based, biddable environment, you can never be 100% certain. And that's a very real risk that you just have to, to measure and weigh as you go to market. So do you think um, some of the problems by the duopoly that have been widely reported could mean that smaller publishers could get a bigger share, or do you see any kind of shift that's resulting from yeah. this? I think there are, there are challenges inherent with that. Um, the publishers uh, uh, themselves are depend dependent and continue to remain dependent, it seems like, uh, on both elements of the, the duopoly, as you say. Uh, and I, I think that if you think about some of the actions taken coming out of Cambridge Analytica and the GDPR uh, developments, um, the onus of responsibility on data hygiene and uh, protection of privacy has been shifted to the publishers as well. So there's even more sort of burden, I, I would say, on them. It's in their best interest to try to come up with alternatives, but similar to consumers, um, I, don't, I don't see any movement happening any, anytime soon. You've been some, some quite public comments in Europe uh, from some publishers there, but uh, it doesn't seem like there's a whole slew of actions that are being taken to um, meaningfully change the environment. Um, that said, at the end of the day, um, you know, you can look at uh, 
both the Google organization and the Facebook organization and the investments they're making in original content development. Um, you know, it's a, I think it's a bit of a new experiment for them. There are many players in the historical non-duopoly publishing world who do that very well. Um, so I think, again, it comes back to the value of content, the value of premium environments in which to engage with that content. Consumers want it, and I think ultimately marketers will too.